The epidemiological transition describes the changing patterns of population demographics in relation to changing trends of mortality, fertility, life expectancy and health and disease. Abdul Omran is widely credited as formulating the theory of epidemiological transition after he published a paper in 1971 describing the three phases of population experiences as economic and technological development occurs and the consequences it has on society. The first transition phase theorised by Omran is the age of pestilence and famine. In present-day high-income countries, such as those in Western Europe, this phase spans from the pre-history period up to approximately the mid-18th century. During this time, mortality rates were high due to frequent epidemics of infectious diseases, wars and famine. It is estimated that during this period, nearly 75% of all deaths were due to infectious diseases, malnutrition and complications related to pregnancy and childbirth. Less than 6% of deaths were due to cardiovascular disease and cancer. Because mortality rates were high, population growth was flat and life expectancy at birth is low, fluctuating between 20 and 40 years during this period. The second transition phase theorised by Omran is the age of receding pandemics. In high income countries, this phase spans from the mid 18th to 20th century. During this time, mortality rates began to fall due to improved nutrition and sanitation. The start of the Industrial Revolution around 1760 resulted in improved mechanisation and efficiency of agriculture, meaning more food could be produced. In addition, the invention of canning and improved efficiency in transportation of food enabled better access to the food supply. In this period, we began to understand that infectious diseases were caused by bacteria and viruses and not transmitted through poisonous air, a theory known as miasma. Once we knew that bacteria and viruses cause diseases, we began to put in place interventions to improve health and safety, such as installing adequate sewerage systems to protect clean water supplies and more hygienic midwifery practices prior to, during and after childbirth. Improvements to food security and sanitation had a significant effect on mortality rates, particularly in children who benefited enormously from these public health measures. Children now live to be adults and have children of their own, resulting in increased fertility, sustained population growth and improvements in life expectancy, which increased to approximately 30 to 50 years. The third transition phase is the age of degenerative and man-made diseases. This phase began around the mid 20th century and continues to this day. This period is defined by improvements in advances in medical interventions and treatment, in particular, the discovery and widespread use of antibiotics and mass immunisation has had significant impacts on mortality rates and survival. Improved survival of children means the fertility rate begins to fall. Reductions in mortality has increased the average life expectancy to above 50 years. Because everyone needs to die and the number of deaths from nutritional, infectious and maternal causes has reduced, other causes of death take its place, namely deaths from chronic diseases are increasing. In 1986, Olshansky and Olt updated Omran's theory to add in a fourth stage, the age of delayed degenerative death. In this stage, which some populations are currently experiencing, life is sustained due to medical technology and death is delayed. This has the effect of further increasing life expectancy and some countries, particularly high income ones, have average life expectancies in excess of 75 to 80 years. Fertility in these populations is very low and the population growth rate from births and deaths alone is stagnant. The four stages of the epidemiological transition the age of pestilence and famine, the age of receding pandemics, the age of degenerative and man-made diseases, and the age of delayed degenerative death, were constructed based on the trends in core-specific mortality and life expectancies in high-income countries, mostly in Europe and North America. While these high-income countries are currently in the fourth phase of the epidemiological transition, low- and middle-income countries are at different stages of the transition. Many are currently shifting from the age of receding pandemics to the age of degenerative and man-made diseases, resulting in what is known as the double burden of disease. 
This means that some countries are still trying to control a high number of deaths from infectious, nutritional and maternal causes, while also trying to combat a growing number of deaths from chronic disease. The double burden of disease is currently a major health challenge in many countries. Since the high income countries have already passed the double burden of disease era in the mid 20th century, experiences and lessons learned from this time may be used to help low and middle income countries manage their epidemiological transition.